Welcome back. Our next guest is someone whose journey from the streets of the Bronx to the silver screen is nothing short of inspiring. He has carved out a name for himself in the world of entertainment with his role as Reggie in the Bad Boys franchise. Joining us now to tell us more about his journey is actor and designer Dennis McDonald. Dennis, thank you so much for joining me. Thank you for having me. Now, I think it's so amazing uh, whenever we have people from the Bronx who, you know, go on to do amazing things. Can you tell us about your journey into the world of acting, especially coming from a place like the Bronx? Well, I came from the Bronx, New York, as you can, as you can tell. Um, it was it, it was kind of rough in the beginning, and then I had a love for basketball, so basketball took me to where acting brought me to. So it was a guy named Johnny Isaac from the um, Harlem Renaissance. He taught it at a um, boys and girls club. He was my, my basketball coach, and then he had a um, sign that said, "If you want to be in Bad Boys 2, call the um, um, call the number." So I called the number because Bad Boys 1 was my favorite movie. So I went on an interview, I mean, went on an audition twice, and then I just got the part. That's the amazing. And I, and I love to hear that it was something that was like in the community. So it was kind of like opening those doors for people in the community. Now, as mentioned, you're best known for your role as Reggie in the Bad Boys franchise. What was it like working on such iconic films? Um, it was real good. They treated me like, um, like family. Um, I learned a lot from Marlon Lawrence and Will Smith, and we just, it was just so much natural chemistry, so I was, it was, it was real good. That's awesome, and, and how did you, how did the character of Reggie resonate with you? Um, I'm naturally a quiet kid, so at first, when they, when they, when they played, brought the script to me, it was like I had to be in front of Martin and Will as, as, the father, I mean, as Martin, Martin is the father of, of the daughter that I'm going to take out. But I never had to go through that when I was in the Bronx, it's going to take a woman, a girl out. So I had to just make it, just make it there. Like, okay, I have to act like I'm scared of these guys, but we don't usually have to do that in, the, in New York. Mm -hmm. So it's like that. That's awesome. And it, it's so like interesting hearing about this experience because I, I could imagine it was an amazing one. Now with Bad Boys 4 on the horizon, can you share any insights into what fans can expect from the upcoming installment? And what excites you most about returning to the franchise? Um, they can expect a lot more, um, a lot more from Reg Reggie, like a lot more action, a lot more, um, you get to know how Reggie is. Like you don't, he's just not just standing at the door like a scared kid. And then, as you've seen in the second, the second one, so you get a lot more of that. Well, that's awesome. Now, despite your success in Hollywood, you've maintained a reputation as an everyday guy and a dedicated mm -hmm. father. How yes. do you balance your career in the entertainment industry with your responsibility, responsibilities as a parent and just a normal person? Um, I have to stay humble and stay open to a lot of criticism and stuff like that. So it just be me one on one with my with my daughter. We we get a, we have a good relationship and we just make sure. Nothing on the outside of this comes in with the inside of what we got going on. That's, so that's pretty much it. That's awesome. And can you expand on just like the importance of kind of staying grounded? Um, whenever we hear about people who do make it, you know, into to the position that you are in, sometimes they may lose themselves or people will say they act different. But, you know, what was it for you that made you uh, decide, like, you know, I want to stay the same person. I want to be a normal guy. I mean, it's just... I'm naturally like that, so I'm naturally humble, so I don't get a big head about a lot of stuff because I know where I come from. Like, I have a lot of people that keep me grounded to let me know where I come from, so I just strive for more and doesn't, don't even look at it as in, it's more work for me. It's everything, is it's work, and I understand that I got to be open to everybody and everything and be open-minded, so I just keep it like that. Now, what lessons or values do you hope to instill in your children through your work and experiences? I just want them to keep going for their dreams no matter what. Like, we sit there and work a normal job or, and we forget about that we had dreams that can get us further than our eyes can imagine. So I just tell my, my daughter and anybody else that is acting or in any field that you're in, just keep working hard and just don't forget your dreams. Now, you're not only an actor, you have also taken a creative side. Can we talk about your web series, Juicy? I want to know, you know, what inspired you to create this project and what themes or messages do you aim to explore through the series? Well, Juicy um, is a web series that I was on. My, a friend actually, she asked me to be in it 
um, she she asked me to be in it like two years before, and I never got to it. And then when I watched the watched the um series, I was like, oh, this is like <clears throat> something I wanted to be into. So I went and did that, and I like both. I like. I like the big screen and I like web series. I like the web series gives me a chance to be my, 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 the other side of me instead of just being Reggie, I and, guess. And now can you expand on that? Cause I think for a lot of people on the outside, like we just see acting as like this one thing. Uh, but what are the differences of like, you know, um, being on a web series and then being in a, like a million dollar, uh, just iconic franchise? There's really no difference other than like the bigger cameras and and that's about it. There's just no difference. Everybody puts in the same hard work and energy into getting their job done. So it's, it's kind of the same. Okay, cool. Now, representation and diversity in the entertainment industry are increasingly important topics. How do you navigate these issues as an actor, particularly as someone from a diverse background? I just try to stay, like I said, as humble as possible and don't let my everyday life that I get into the, that I got going on. And how do you, know. like, you know, being on the screen, how do you hope that your image, you know, inspires other young boys, especially from the Bronx, who aspire to be actors or aspire to do bigger things? Like, you know, what, what message do you have for them and how do you hope they feel when they see you on the screen? Well, like I said, I come from a really rough neighborhood. So people that know me and people that don't know me, like I just want them to know that we're all human beings and we go through the same, where we from, we go through the same things. Like we have to, we have to overcome the same things, come outside and deal with the same negative energy and everything. So I just want them to just keep focus, keep focus and just try to stay out of trouble as best as you can. Cause we, we from somewhere where trouble comes faster than anything so I just want to tell them that just keep at your dreams keep working keep working hard and and just don't ever stop don't ever stop now expanding on that as someone who hails from the Bronx and has succeeded in Hollywood how important do you think it is for other actors to maintain a connection to their roots and their community I think you should definitely stay connected with your community your community is definitely going to keep you grounded and let you know that let you know like what's going on like when the world is too big for you, like I come back to my community to make sure they keep me grounded. They let me know that I have to keep on working. It doesn't stop. I have to keep staying away from these negative places and give back to these negative pla to these places that have all this negative energy in it. So that's how I I stay stay grounded. And I want to um, expand on that a little bit more as well because I know that for a lot of people. Um, when they make it right or they succeed in another area oftentimes the first thought is to leave the community behind you know can you talk about that mentality that a lot of people have and you know what are your thoughts on that leave your community behind all right is is it's not leaving your community behind I think when people say that they just want to leave because they've been in a community where it's nothing really going on Mm -hmm. So you want to get out of the, where you lived at. You want to have a better life. But that doesn't mean you have to hate where you came from because you came from here. Like, this is where it started at. So whether you didn't like it or not, you got up out of it, but you've learned you have all these jewels and gems and stuff that you learn from a bad place that will keep you grounded from where you go to, like, where you're going far and, and far, in, far in life. Like, you need to stay grounded to, commu to your community. You have to. Right. And for me, I don't know, for everybody else, I can't say, but for me. And, and I think it's important that you mentioned that, that there is this way to, you know, of course, you don't want to stay the same. Growth is a part of life, so you want to grow um, and move on to bigger things. But there is a way to still stay connected with your community without completely abandoning it. So I right. appreciate you for mentioning that because I think it's so important. Now, looking ahead, what are your goals and aspirations for your acting career? For my acting career, I'm doing a lot more action. I'm gonna do a lot more action. Um, I want, I really want to become an Avenger, and I want to be, I want to play Kobe Bryant in a movie. Oh wow, that's amazing! In a documentary, so I'm, I'm manifesting that and putting that to work as we speak. And can you tell us a little bit more about that? Because I, I think that when, um, when it comes to like documentaries and biopics, like there is, these are now portraying real people, right? And so it's a little right. bit different. You know, do you have any 
um, aspirations or fears or you know just goals mm -hmm. in regards to doing that? No, I just want that's that's just my biggest goal. Kobe Bryant is one of my favorite basketball players. Who was one of my favorite basketball players, and to play him in a movie. And now that I got the opportunity to make that happen, I'm gonna go full for force with that. So that's when, that's something that I really gonna make happen. That's amazing. Um, and and you talked about Kobe Bryant. Kobe Bryant being an inspiration in the world of acting. Are there any other people that you look to for inspiration or that you aspire to be more like when it comes to acting? Will Smith, Martin Lawrence. Um, who else? Denzel, of course. All the all the all the greats. My, even my, Michael B. Jordan. I mean, um, and me. <laughs> That's awesome. Now, what message would you like to share with our audience, both those who have followed your career since the beginning and those who are just discovering your work? It's been a long journey. It's been a whole, a real long journey for the people that know me. No, for the people that don't know me, it has been a long jersey, journey, and I'm just happy to still be in the position that I'm in, just giving y'all good work. And, and I also think that it's, like, this is a very hard industry um, to be a part of and and people you know try for for so long to try to make it and you know unfortunately because it's such a hard journey and it, it takes a lot to be a part of this industry you know sometimes people do other things but I think it's amazing that you know despite everything that we hear about the Bronx you decided to keep pushing forward to follow your dreams so I think that's amazing and I'm so glad that you were here to you know kind of share this experience with us now in addition to your work on screen you're also involved in various philanthropic endeavors can you share a bit about the causes that are close to your heart and how you use your platform to make a positive impact I use like acting to like talk to my younger youth like to let them know that even though you see you because you see me in the street and, and on your every day, and then you see me on the big screen, and then you see my trials and tribulations that I went to went through. These are kids that I know, and I, I'm just happy that I'm here now, so I can let them know that you can be better than the what they set out for you to be. Like you can be that person that you want to be. You just gotta keep working at it. Like it's gonna be a rough journey throughout this whole thing, but you're gonna look back and be like, I'm not in the streets. I'm not incarcerated. I'm not what you they think. It's supposed to be happening with us, so that's how I use my my my, my work ethic to help my now community. for for anybody that's watching, um, and even for younger people who who decide that they want to be a little bit more creative and they want to do things on screen, you know, what advice do you have for them? And I also love that you mentioned that you're a part of a web series, despite being a part of this this huge franchise, because I think it shows that um, any opportunity. And anything that you really care about is important, no matter the size. So, you know, in addition to that, what advice do you have for people who want to be in this industry? Um, just don't take no for an answer. Like, because this is not, it's like a lottery pick. Like, you go to all these auditions and you stand in front of these people, you do your best and you don't get it. And they slam doors in your face and they slam doors in your face. And I tell you this, take the door out the way. Make your own movie. Make your own, I mean, so you don't have to be always going to cast and you can make your own movie and you can be in your movie and cast other people and do what you want to do. This is the day and age that we can do what we want. It's not, we don't, it's not a lot of restrictions on, I mean, how you can get into a movie, you just make your own. Right, especially, and I love that you mentioned that because especially when we talk about representation um, and how people feel that they're not represented on screen, um, what you mentioned is really important is that, that, you know, we have access to cameras now, people can, create their own stories mm -hmm. um, and kind of like bring that voice into Hollywood that they don't see. So I think that's mm -hmm. amazing. And that was a really great piece of advice. Now, can you share with us any upcoming initiatives or causes that you're passionate about or involved in, um, whether it's in the entertainment industry or just in your own community? Um, I'm passionate. I'm really passionate about the Boys and Girls Club that I came out of. I really um, want to give back to them. And I, like, I go every so often and speak and do little things like that, but I really want to give all the way back with them. So that's that's what that's what I want to do. And can you tell us a little bit more about the Boys and Girls Club and your experience there? Well, my experience is they they kept us out the the streets. Like when all of the wild stuff was going on, we were in the Boys and Girls Club playing basketball, um, playing pool, swimming, doing all types of different activities. 
So that just kept us out the club. I mean, kept us out the street. We didn't want to be in the street. Right. But nowadays, like they don't have a lot of of these same things for for kids now. Like they have them, but they don't really have a lot of them. So it causes kids to be in the streets and kids to be incarcerated and stuff like that because they don't have nowhere to go to have fun. Well, I want to thank you so much for joining us and telling us a little bit about your journey in the entertainment industry. Um, and, you know, kind of talking about how often you support the Bronx and how you're, you know, you're proud of where you come from. We really love to hear that. So I want to thank you so much for that. Can you just let everybody know how they can stay updated with you, any social media and things like that? Yes, okay. My IG is Dennis McDonald, the real Dennis McDonald. Uh, um, you can Twitter the same thing. In, um, TikTok, the same thing, all of everything. All right. Well, thank you again. Thank you. We have to take a quick break. We'll be back right after this.